welcome back to the Bible Study Club. I want to welcome all of our first-time members joining this month and to thank all of the returning members continuously being a part of the Bible Study Club. My name is Marley Mulebar, and I'm the owner of a small business called Be Planted, which is a Bible boutique. I love all things Bible-related, especially when it comes to being creative with personalizing Bibles through art, stickers, notes, and any other creative personalization. For this month's Bible Study Club, we are going to be focusing on the importance of declaring Scripture over our lives and how we can really tap into the power within Scripture. November is a month that makes me think of all things pumpkin, harvest, Thanksgiving. <laughs> what about you? The original Thanksgiving was a meal enjoyed between the pilgrims and Native Americans. In 1621, after a very difficult first winter for the English, they learned from the Native Americans how to farm effectively in North America. This led to a bountiful harvest in the fall of 1621, prompting the settlers to hold a celebratory feast. Historians believe that a hundred people were present at this celebration that lasted three days. Part of the meal was a native variety of corn that was harvested by the Native Americans. The harvest season is actually a process of gathering together crops, animals, and even fish to eat. The key point of the success to this harvest and the food that was enjoyed by over a hundred people was that pilgrims learned how to successfully plant and farm prior to the harvest. Did you realize corn actually takes 90 to 120 days to fully grow into maturity and to be ready to harvest? So the corn that was eaten in the original Thanksgiving meal wasn't planted the day it was eaten and enjoyed. Instead, it was planted with the expectation of having corn to harvest three to four months earlier. Proverbs 20 verse 4 tells us a farmer too lazy to plant in the spring has nothing to harvest in the fall. That's the message version. In Matthew 13, 3 through 9, God specifically calls scripture seeds. Scripture seeds can be similar to regular plant seeds in the fact that they are powerful and full of great potential, but that potential is dormant until the seed is planted. When a seed is planted, the farmer trusts, hopes, and believes that the seed will grow into the crop that it's supposed to. I know we all want a large harvest of blessing for our lives, but what if it first takes understanding how to effectively plant the seeds of Scripture before we can harvest the blessings from Scripture? Could we be missing out on a bountiful harvest of blessing and prosperity for our lives and our families' lives by not effectively sowing the Word of God daily? Hmm. Romans 10.10 10 says that for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess with faith and are saved. So when scripture is planted in our hearts and we believe the words of scripture to be truly specific for our own lives, then by faith we must profess or speak out loud what we believe with our mouths. January 25th, 2022, I created a declarations page and hung it in my prayer closet. This declarations page was broken into four sections, my personal self, my business and career, my husband slash marriage, and my children. I even extended the section for my children to include their future spouse, my future grandkids, my future great-great-grandkids, and all the way down the line of our family lineage. Each declaration per category, I attached a scripture of God's truth and promise to it. At this point in my life, several of the items that I was declaring were simply just visions of God that he had given me. I didn't have any tangible proof other than scripture and faith that the things I was declaring were going to come to pass. Truly. Each declaration per category, I attached a scripture of God's truth and promise to it. At this point in my life, several of the items I was declaring were simply just visions of God that He had given to me. I didn't have any tangible proof other than scripture and faith that the things I was declaring were going to come to pass. The biblical definition of declaration is to make known or to set forth. When we speak out loud the promises of scripture over ourselves, our family, and our friends, then that is when we begin to tap into the supernatural power of God's word. The main focus verse for this month is Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, and it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing that I sent it. I love this verse because it gives me encouragement. I can know that even if I don't see a change or a big blessing the next day after I declare scripture or two months after or even a year after, 
I can believe and hold firm to the promises that I'm declaring because what I'm believing and declaring for will accomplish and succeed the thing I sent it out for. This type of trust does take a level of understanding that God is sovereign and in control of all things, though. So the way that I think the healing should happen or how the financial breakthrough should be done or how, or how the doors of opportunity should be open for me might not be God's plan. The promise of scripture is that the healing will happen, all the needs will be met, and nothing can stop God's purpose for my life. But we have to remember that God's definition of success or succeeding is different from current culture. We have to understand that his timing is perfect, he's never late, and he's never early. Ultimately, our hearts have to desire an intimate relationship with the healer more than actually getting the healing. We must understand that the attitude of our hearts or the condition of the soil that the seeds are planted in can positively or negatively affect the growth of that seed. If we are speaking scripture and declaring with deep passion out loud the words of God, but we don't really believe what we are saying or we haven't softened our hearts to be open to the discipline from God, then we are more focused on what we can get from him instead of understanding that the power is multiplied through the intimacy and relationship we have with him. Every seed needs water and nutrients to grow. That's the same for us too. We must continuously feed our spirits with the bread of life and the living water. By doing this, we are continuously in our Bibles, reading and learning about the promises God has for us. This develops a deep personal connection with the Holy Spirit. So when we get a vision and a specific word for our lives, we can be able to discern if what we are declaring is of God or based on pride and comparison issues. It's important for every seed to grow deep roots and a strong foundation to withstand the wind and the troubles to come. This is the same for us also. If we aren't growing deep roots with God's word, then we won't know the promises we can declare over our lives and we won't be able to stand firm in faith when reality looks different than what we are believing for. One of the most important things about declaring scripture over our lives is understanding that we are fighting in the supernatural to change the natural. If you are declaring something over your marriage, but then the next day you and your husband are still fighting over the same thing, you must stand firm in faith until you see a change or you see a breakthrough. Don't take that first thing as God telling you that it's not going to happen. You have to believe the promises that scripture gave you. Just like the pilgrims and Native Americans had a bountiful harvest to enjoy over a span of three days, you too can change the trajectory of your life and the potential of God's power in your life by planting seeds prior. The word of God is the only weapon in the armor of God, so that should tell you how powerful it really is when it comes to protecting us and fighting back against the schemes of the devil. In this month's packet, there are scriptures and examples to declare over your life and your family's life. Use the declaration sheet to write down specific truths that you are going to stand in faith over until you see them come to pass. Stand strong, sister. You never know what blessings this next year you could harvest just by starting the process now of planting the seeds. I have personally seen God move in mighty ways since I first started my declaration page back in 2022. This was because I chose to be disciplined and speak out loud my declarations each morning for almost two years now. The Bible study club was actually a vision God had laid on my heart, and, and then I wrote it on my declaration page and began to speak it into life. I'm so thankful Jesus died on the cross to save me from my sins, but I also, I want to experience a part of heaven here on earth that God specifically saved just for me and my family. That happened through speaking out those truths and believing it and, and declaring it over our lives. Thank you for being a part of this month's Bible Study Club. I would love to hear from you on what your thoughts are about declaring scripture daily and what are some things that God has specifically laid on your heart to stand in faith for and believe for, for now, for next year, for the next couple of years, for on down your family lineage. What are you believing for for your great grandkids? Um, I would love to know those things. So I hope you have a very, very happy Thanksgiving and I hope you enjoy the time with your family and I will see you soon. Love you. Bye.